Good morning, everybody, and welcome to the Stalls TV Morning Show. I'm Courtney. And I'm Karen. And we're excited to have you guys here with us today, both on Facebook Live and through GoToMeeting. And we have a lot of different things that we're excited to share with you on today's episode, including a brand new series. So if you tuned in for the last seven episodes, you got to, um, or eight episodes, you got to see our branding series. And so we launched a survey at the end. We wanted to know what you guys want to see more of so we can continue these series throughout the morning show. And so we have a couple ideas coming over the next couple of months. The first one is going to be um, seven markets that you should be selling to. And so we're going to kick that off today. We're also going to talk about some different ways to fix top heat printing challenges, which we know um, just a lot of you run into mistakes and challenges in your business. So we want to share some tips that we have for heat printing there. And then also we have um, our look of the week and just a pretty good, exciting episode for everybody today. So let's kick off with the look of the week, which is our favorite. We love to get inspiration from you guys and we like to see what you're doing out there on Facebook or Instagram. And so this one was submitted on the Stalls Show and Sell um, during our Facebook page last weekend. And it is from Kelly Smith, Kelsey Smith at K&D Custom Designs in Kansas. And so we um, just really love the idea that she did a two-color design. It's going to feature a lot of the things that we'll talk about today in the morning show, but it creates a really good um, grasp of a two-color image with heat transfer vinyl that creates a really cool, almost a full-color effect by throwing that clip art on the inside and making it look like a seamless image in the two-color design. I love this look. Yeah, anything with the knockout designs are really popular. We have a ton of videos on Stalls TV that show you how to do that as far as creating knockout artwork in CADWorks Live, which is our free online design software, and some tips for application and stuff too. And so um, Kelsey did a knockout job on that knockout design. <laughs> <laughs> she sure did. Little punny there. <laughs> All right, so that's the look of the week. What else we got going on today? So, like Courtney mentioned earlier, we have a brand new segment that we're going to be running every week for you now because you answered the survey and we took what you said into consideration. We put this together for you, so I think we should probably jump right into that now and show you seven markets that you should be selling to. Welcome to 7 Markets You Should Be Selling Apparel To. In this first installment, we're going to talk a little bit about municipalities. Overall, in this series, you're going to find that we're going to share with you not only 7 different markets you should be selling to, but how to do that successfully. So how to choose the right blank, the right decoration, and how to find those customers in your area so you can be profitable with these lucrative markets. So let's talk a little bit about municipalities. Municipalities, which feature police um, EMS, local construction crews, anything like that, falls into a different category. Um, these government agencies create a huge opportunity. In fact, in 2017, the North American workwear and uniforms market is estimated to bring in a revenue of $10.49 billion. So there's a lot of money to be made, especially in the apparel sector. Um, and so when it comes down to reaching this market, we're going to look at three different ways to do this. First, we're going to look at um, product selection. How do we choose the right products for municipalities? Secondly, we're going to look at decoration. So what type of decoration are these groups looking for? Which type works best? And then lastly, we're going to talk about how to find these customers. Um, and so we'll talk about different ways you can build lists, looking outside your local area, and all of that to start making money profiting with this. The first option is always going to be to choose your blank. And so we need to have some samples and some products selected, selected before we go out and start finding these customers. Um, so when we choose blanks, one thing about municipalities is that they often purchase on value. And so their government agencies are traditionally looking for some kind of value to be built into the package, whether that's with the blanks that you're choosing or the way you're packaging products together. They tend to like um, being able to see that they're getting a good value for the money that they're spending on the items that you're printing. And so it's worthwhile to look at some value blanks, especially if you're just printing simple things like t-shirts or long sleeve shirts and even basic outerwear. Um, if you're just kind of printing that basic market, then I recommend looking at some value suppliers. Sanmar um, is one that offers a great value line in their um, port and company. And you can usually get inexpensive blanks and be able to get a valuable garment that's still long lasting at a lower price. So that's one recommendation. Um, product price and quality are big selling points whenever you even create your packaging pricing for these customers. So 
not only when you're choosing your blanks, but even just in presenting pricing, you always want to present pricing to them in a way that's showing them the value that they're getting. Another thing to consider um, is being able to offer specialized items. And so those things fall into more of a higher end workwear category. These categories include reflective garments, um, wind resistant or water resistant outerwear, and more high end items. Um, in fact, if you're starting to sell to, let's say, federal aid highways or roadways or crews that work on those groups, then you'll find that they absolutely have to have high visibility jackets and pants, vests, and all of that. And so if you're going after that market, the products that you're going to sell them are certainly going to have high visibility reflective tendencies to them. Likewise, if you're selling towards a fire organization and you're looking to sell their uniforms, then something that's flame retardant is going to be very important. So look for those specialized keys. Um, you may even find that your supplier for workwear has some specialized items. So if I'm going after the EMT market, I may be able to choose a blank that has some additional pockets and areas that I can um, embroider or decorate that makes it a more usable garment for the wearer. So those are some tips whenever you're choosing um, the items that you're selling. Next, we're going to look at decoration. And so the decoration that you select tends to be two different types of decoration on these items. We see um, the name drops or being able to personalize it with somebody's name. That's one large opportunity. For name drops or personalization, we tend to see either embroidery or heat transfer materials used for these types of applications because they tend to be the most cost effective for personalization. Um, now the heat transfer round will actually allow you to even get some higher end finishes like reflective that then complement those high visibility effects. And so that's one of the big key opportunities there in general with heat transfer materials, whether it's with name drops or the second category, which is going to focus on branded logos. So that is putting the actual organization's logo on the back or the front of the item that you're printing. Um, with that, we tend to again see embroidery. Screen printing is widely used, as is screen printed transfers if you're doing a higher quantity for the organization, and heat transfers are still widely used. In fact, if you're looking for a special effect finish like a reflective, heat transfers tends to be the most popular way to go because it's the easiest to get the reflective on the item. There's no additional steps or additives. You can simply either order custom transfers in a reflective material or just load it on a vinyl cutter and cut it and get that custom graphic. So those create some great opportunities there. Um, keep in mind if you are decorating flame retardant clothing, then screen printing or patches tend to be a better choice than embroidery so you're not punching too many holes um, or even heat transfers if the adhesive will stick depending on the transfer type. Um, so you're not putting too many holes through the item with direct embroidery. Lastly, let's talk a little bit about how to find buyers and how to price items. So I talked a little bit earlier about being able to build packages and create value. That's incredibly important the way that you show products and pricing to your customers So making sure you're building in enough um, of a margin that you can offer discounts when they purchase multiple items in a package set. Also, convenience is very big. So again, if they need jackets and pants and a vest, packaging those items together, make it convenient for them. Um, and the convenience may not even be in the way that you're selling the products, it may be in the way that you deliver the products. But keep in mind that when they're looking for suppliers, pricing and convenience are two big factors. So you need to work that into either your delivery or your pricing or just the customer service that you're offering them. Next, when it comes to finding buyers, I recommend starting in your local area. So using Google, Yellow Pages, um, either of those to find those types of organizations that are in your area. So we're looking at construction workers, um, adopt the highway workers, tro tow truck drivers, electric companies, construction workers, utility workers, landscaping companies. There's a huge list of them that need these types of high visibility or workwear items. And so you can start searching for those types of companies that are in your area just using Google Maps or Yellow Pages. Next, you could contact small business specialists at large corporations, so they will be able to um, send you a list of the items and services that they're looking for. And so that may be a great way if you have a large organization in your area that you want to go after, um, reaching out to those small business specialists there. You could also check www.gsaadvantage.gov website. That shares um, more information on larger businesses that hold government contracts. And so you may be able to find some new leads that you hadn't thought of maybe that are outside of your area that hold government contracts that have a need for some of these workwear type products. And so there's a variety of ways you can get started. Like I said, I recommend starting in your local area and working your way out. 
once you build your product offering with the right products and the right decoration, you'll find that you're able to be successful in this market and start selling to this lucrative opportunity. Thanks for joining me for this week's opportunity of seven markets you should be selling apparel to. We hope you guys enjoyed the first installment of seven uh, markets you should be selling apparel to. Um, and that was just municipalities. So there's a huge opportunity with municipalities as I kind of talked about in the video and profiting with them. They're in every local area. Um, and so you should be able to reach out to them even if it's just your local area and reach that new market. Next week, we're gonna talk um, a little bit about dance and cheer apparel and kind of that marketplace. And so we've got a wide range of markets we're gonna feature over the next seven episodes. So certainly something you won't wanna miss here on the morning show. I think it's time though to dive into our first or our um, main part of the episode, which is gonna be talking about those top heat printing mistakes. And we know that none of you make mistakes in your business, but just in case you happen to run across some of these issues or you're having challenges maybe with new employees, we wanna talk about ways to avoid them or ways to fix them. Um, and the first one I think we're gonna kick off with is probably one of the biggest challenges. I have problems with this all the time. <laughs> you know, no matter how hard you practice, you're always gonna have a mistake every once in a while. So the first thing that we wanna talk about is alignment. And there's many different ways for you to misalign a transfer when you're placing it on a garment. And the first one that I wanna talk about is your design being off center. You can see here we have a graphic for you on the screen. The, sh the design is aligned straight, it's not crooked, but it is just completely far off to the one side. So we have a couple of ways that you can fix this you know, mistake or prevent it at least in the future. And um, the most important would be using like simple tools and things that you already have in your shop. Uh, I know a lot of people will take their shirt and find the middle and fold it in half and then lay it under their press or yeah, their heat press and crease the middle of the shirt so that they can lay their transfer right in the middle of the shirt. Other people would use a T-square or a ruler and some people find that the easiest way for them is to use a laser alignment system. So really just making these things easier for yourself. Yeah, definitely finding the center of your shirt is ideal if you're trying to center the transfer. And so, you know, creating that crease mark using a laser alignment tool or ruler and even just simply loading your shirt on straight. I always use the bottom platen to line stuff up as my center mark. So if my shirt's not lined center where the collar is perfectly centered on that platen, then it's not gonna do me any good. So even that's a good tip for um, getting things a little bit off, a little bit on center from being off center. I agree. So there are other ways that you can misalign your design transfers. Um, we have another example. It's a left chest logo on this blue jacket. You can see that the left chest logo is just way too low. And you know, even for left chest logos, loading your garment on is super important, but also just following measurement tips for aligning that design on the left chest. You wanna make sure that if you're supposed to measure down, you know, three and a half to four inches below your collar, that you're doing that correctly. Use a ruler or a measuring tape just to make sure you're measuring down accurately. A placement guide could help you with this too. Or even again, the laser alignment system could come into play here for this jacket as well. Just making sure that you're not getting that design in your armpit yeah. so <laughs> that you can't see it at all. Yeah, we featured the um, ultimate placement guide last, I think the last two morning shows that's available on stalls.com and you can also download it off of the Facebook page as well if you follow um, Stahl's Facebook page. But that placement guide's a great tool to have around. Left chest logos are by far one of the most challenging um, placements that I see decorators having problems with, especially today because a lot of the female garments um, that are left chest, whether it's a woven or a quarter zip, tend to have a little bit, not a whole lot of margin for error where the armpit starts and the shirt. So it almost feels as if you're putting the logo too far up. Um, so just use your... Um, best judgment, although the recommendation may be five inches down from the seam of the top of the shirt, you may look at a small lady's garment and right. that may be way too low. So also adjust for those things when you look at the cut of the garment. That one had seams and there's a lot of different issues that can get into the way of actually placing it on a garment like that. Definitely. And we have one more alignment mistake that you can make and that is when you put your design on just crooked not straight, going in one direction, up, down, whichever way it may be. We've all done it, but there are ways that you can prevent it. Again, like we've talked about with the other alignment mistakes, making sure your garment is loaded on correctly. And I know what I do and what Courtney K does and what a lot of us here do when we are loading that garment, especially if you have a threadable press, pull the garment all the way in and then pull by the shoulders to get the collar off. So generally that'll give you a really nice, even, straight, 
pressing surface. And again, using a ruler, laser alignment, placement guide, making sure that that design is straight across the shirt. Yeah, again, it all comes down to loading that shirt on straight. If the shirt's not loaded on straight, um, then you're going to have challenges. Even the, the best ruler and the best laser alignment system can't fix it if you're lining it up sure with it's crooked. crooked. Yeah, absolutely. And so those are some great tips for alignment. Um, the next challenge we want to talk about is probably the second most popular, which is um, having transfer stick or durability. And so there's a couple of things. Usually if I ever get a call from a customer and something's not sticking or there's a durability issue, there's two things I check. Um, the first is the material compatibility. So if you've had numbers falling off or you've had a design won't stick even at the heat press, um, first you want to check and make sure the transfer that you're using is compatible with the fabric you're decorating. Of course, if you're doing a cotton t-shirt or a polyester, they tend to be easy to decorate because most transfer types will stick to those garments. Right. Um, the second thing, in addition to application, so time and temperature, um, is to look at how you're applying things. So, um, what else could get into the way of the transfer? And so I know that I've got a transfer that's compatible with my fabric. Um, if it's, of course, nylon, I need a transfer that's going to stick to that. But if I know that those two things work, then it comes into what else is in the garment that's getting in the way. Is there a thick collar? Is there a thick seam on the shoulders? Um, I see it even a lot with team uniforms because of the nameplates right. on the backs printing through or just those thick seams getting close to the numbers and they're causing certain areas to peel up. And so getting an item flat and pressure is absolutely ideal once you check the material compatibility because that ensures that all areas of the transfer are getting the accurate pressure that's needed. And so we show them a lot here on the morning show, um, but heat printing pillows, heat printing pads, or interchangeable platens can all help to get the item flat. What you want is all the seams off completely and just the top part of the shirt where the transfer is coming, sticking onto the platen. They're so useful, all those pads and pillows and things. You just make everything so much easier for yourself. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so that's some tips there with sticking and durability. Um, other issues that we tend to have are scorch marks. And so that kind of follows the same line of durability and issues with that. And um, scorch marks, um, there's two different types of scorch marks really that I want to touch on. The cotton ones that you see on your cotton garments are going to fade back. Um, if it's 100% cotton, 60-40, 50-50 and a red shirt, say, turns um, a darker shade of red at the heat press, that coloring is going to come back in the garment. So that's not a challenge, really, that we have, other than if your customers are sitting there waiting for the item to be printed, you know, then they're a little bit concerned as to why the garment has changed color. So you need to be aware to educate them on that um, or choose garments that don't change color, like a light gray or a white. Um, the other challenge is the biggest one because this one is hard to fix, so you need to avoid it, and that is scorch marks on polyesters. Um, we see it on performance wear, we see it on tri-blends, um, and a lot of the really fashionable garments that are in the market today, they've got rayon, they've got um, viscose, polyester, all mixed into the garment themselves, and all of those items are heat sensitive. And so what happens is the garment shines up a little bit, it creates that scorch mark, and so the only way, you can't really fix that once it happens. Um, I can't throw it in the wash to get rid of it. What I need to do is be aware that if the fabric is going to be heat sensitive and it's a polyester performance wear or a tri-blend, I need to um, set my business up with a low temperature adhesive. So having um, a low temperature transfer like maybe CAD Cut Premium Plus for a vinyl cutter or Elasti Prints for screen printed transfers, having those products in stock so I can just start there and avoid um, the scorching because that happens when the heat's too high for the garment. And a lot of those garments now are tri-blends or performance wear and they're expensive garments and you don't want to ruin those garments. So preventing it will save you money and time and your customers will be happier in the long run. Yeah, one time I did order a uh, tri-blend tank top for myself when I printed it and the heat was too high. It did scorch it. So what I did is I just uh, loaded it on the plat and, and Scorched the whole thing, sure. so you couldn't tell where the scorch I mark have was. That once or twice I guess too. that's a way to fix it, but certainly not calm, any kind of production friendly or cost effective way that you would want to do that. So definitely choose low temperature to get started with. I agree. Perfect. Mm -hmm. All right, what's some other challenges we have here? Uh, well, we can talk about if we go into actual designing of um, your artwork. That's another way that you can prevent mishaps, kind of not just in the actual production heat printing side of it, but you can also kind of, you know, make an oops here and there when you're designing your art. So what I want to talk to you about is 
whenever you are creating a design where you're bringing in multiple pieces of artwork, clip art, text, and you're lining them up on top of each other in your design software, they might look like one fluid image, especially if they're the same color if you put them on top of each other. But if you don't check before you send that design to the cutter, it's not going to recognize that that one like solid color, it's going to cut through the lettering and the images unless you weld them together. So they're reading separately until you look in that wireframe view and see where your cut lines are and weld those designs together and turn them into one solid image. So if you are cutting your vinyl and you go to lay it on the press and you didn't weld it, you'll see kind of cut marks through your design. And sometimes they're not visible, but a lot of times you'll have a line where you just have garment show through going right through the middle of your design. Yeah, welding is definitely key if you're using heat transfer vinyl and cutting out graphics. Um, and I guess the other thing that's key when you're cutting graphics is mirroring your graphics. So I, I've worked with a lot of decorators that um, call me and they say I put this name on backwards um, and now it's up, it's, so I need to find a way to remove it. Well, before we get to that step, um, always making sure you mirror your transfers. And you know the best way to avoid that is to um, you know, make a reminder for yourself, maybe a post-it or a note on top of the computer so whoever's sending the designs, they know, always click mirror before I hit this button. Um, and that way you're always mirroring your designs. And even checking and making sure you have a quality inspection, that's good for a lot of the time saving the garment from a lot of mistakes. But even if the transfers are cut backwards, and once you get a bit of the heat press, realizing that before you press it down because it's much less expensive to replace a transfer than it is a transfer in a garment. Exactly. So there's some ways to avoid that. Um, and there's a few challenges really with heat transfer vinyl when it comes to heat printing and some tips for um, fixing mistakes or making things easier. And a lot of them come into layering. We saw on the look of the week how beautiful a two-color design can look in a heat transfer material. But there are some challenges with layering. Um, the first one is always that the design, a lot of the times when you go to lay up the foreground over the background design, it, you'll notice a little bit of shrinking. It seems like they don't fit together the same way they did in your design. And so what happens is the heat of the heat press does shrink that bottom layer a little bit. So if I'm using a product like let's say CAD Cut Fashion Film, which traditionally applies at 15 seconds. If I do that background at the full 15 seconds, it's shrinking that vinyl just a little bit and it's going to make my top layer very difficult to line up. Um, so I need to look and see if I have a tacking option where I can just tack that bottom layer for a few seconds. Most of the hot peel products from Stalls can do that. So Fashion Film, Glitter Flake, Premium Plus, Thermo Film, um, Glow, all of those products will allow you to tack it, reduce the amount of heat that's on that bottom layer, hot peel the carrier, and then you can inlay your top color. Um, and that's going to allow you to then um, reduce any shrinking, makes it easier to line it up, and even give yourself some room for error in, in creating your artwork. I mean, if you have a very, very small contour that you're trying to show on the outside, then it's still going to be very hard to register. So make sure your contour is a little bit larger if you're doing two-color um, lettering or two-color designs in your artwork software. It'll save you a lot of frustration because that is the worst, getting over to the press and you're already halfway through with your design. and. It's just not lining up at all. Yeah, absolutely. And, and the tacking feature is, is huge because it helps save, um, not only helps you in alignment and getting a premium design, it helps to avoid all those mistakes and headaches, but it helps you speed up your time. And if you've ever come across a design where um, maybe the center of it inlays and it creates an indent mark, which kind of creates a less than premium quality, that tack can help to reduce that um, that indent mark from going through the back layer of the heat transfer vinyl as well. So you could even tack the foreground layer and then cover it and apply it for its full application. So a lot of benefits of having a material that does that fast tack. Yeah, I really like that capability with our materials. Yep, and then uh, the last thing we wanted to cover, just some challenges with um, things sticking where they shouldn't. And so <laughs> um, the first one is going to be if things stick to, let's say, that shirt that I had put the name on backwards, how do I fix that now? Um, the best solution is to keep a bottle of so uh, lettering solvent remover, which is traditionally some type of methylene chloride product. Um, of course, you want to use gloves and use it safely in a well-ventilated area, but you can simply use that solution, um, even if you just get a little piece of vinyl that maybe was stuck to the carrier and applied and you want to remove that little piece, it can help to completely save a garment. And so you turn the garment inside out, apply that solvent on the adhesive side, 
um, and kind of saturate it and then you're able to peel those letters off. And if, um, I always recommend testing to make sure you're not going to see any discoloration, but it's a huge help for saving some of those garments if it's just a little letter or if it's just a little small piece that needs to be removed so you can quickly fix it and not have to pay to have a whole other garment ordered. And I feel like that's a question we get a lot, especially on our Styles TV YouTube and on the forum, how can I remove this final? And that's really your, your go-to, that's the way to get it off. Yeah, and while we're thinking about removal, um, if the vinyl actually sticks to the top of the platen and not the actual garment, then there's some challenges there as well. Um, luckily, most of the heat, or all of the heat, hot, Hotronics heat presses, there we go, all of them are Teflon coated on the top of the machine, so you're able to simply take a industrial cleaner like a um, Gojo or something like that and a rag and just kind of wipe it off so you're not going to destroy the top of your heat press. It's easy to get vinyl or ink off of the top of it there. Right, and you can always prevent that from happening by using a cover sheet, whether it's craft paper or reusable cover sheet or even, you know, any, either of those cover sheets. That'll keep you from getting anything on your top plat and save you from having to clean it off every time you go to press. Yeah, it's a good call as well. Um, so we're getting to the end of our top challenges and what we see from a lot of decorators. Uh, Taylor, have we gotten some questions come in from some people on the GoToWebinar client? Yes. Um, somebody actually mentioned that they hate dye migration. So whenever you were talking about the mistakes, so they were talking about that. I don't know if you wanted to go over that at all. Yeah, we could definitely touch on dye migration. That's a big challenge. And so um, that's one of those things that is hard to fix once you hit into it. And so it becomes more about being educated and avoiding it at the, um, before you get to the heat press step with your garment selection. So traditionally dye migration, if you're not familiar with dye migration, occurs when the ink um, of a polyester garment is opened up underneath the heat of a heat press. Those inks are now susceptible to bleeding through the transfer. And so let's say a red football jersey turns a white number pink. Um, not always with all polyester football jerseys, and it may not be with all the ones that you ordered, so it's kind of hard to control. And so if I run across a blank that's 100% polyester, and then I, it's a darker color, a red, a navy, uh, black, and I think it's going to have a, a risk of dye migration, then I always start with a, a transfer that's going to help to avoid that. So something that's dye inhibiting, like CadCut Thermofilm, um, CAD Color Sublistop, both of those products will allow me to um, help block the dyes before they come through and so it helps me to avoid that. Now if you run across the issue after you've applied it, you didn't realize it. Um, I do know a lot of decorators have successfully and I have myself applied a second transfer over top of it to avoid the ink from showing up. Of course that's just adding a second layer. Um, it's not a hundred percent solution because you're not guaranteeing that it's not going to continue to bleed through a second thin layer. But if I had placed let's say a thin material like fashion film that wasn't dye inhibiting and the inks came through, I would try, try to recommend putting premium or uh, putting thermofilm over top of that. That way that the thermofilm should help to block those dyes from coming through. Okay, so the, um, Laura actually asked some questions here when you were talking about tri-blends. They were asking, what about using Teflon cover sheets, cover sheets for your tri-blend or polyester garments? Does that help or will it affect the durability of the vinyl? And can I use fashion film on these garments if I use a Teflon cover sheet? All right, so a lot of questions there. Um, so absolutely you can use a Teflon sheet. You should always use a cover sheet. Um, just to avoid anything from sticking. It's not going to pull out any of the um, temperature that's going to cause any of the scorching. And so it's not really going to prevent against the scorching using a Teflon cover sheet. Um, and again, even with the fashion film at 320 degrees with a darker tri-blend, you're probably going to see some scorching. So I would still recommend looking towards Premium Plus instead for those garments. Um, they do sell cover sheets that are ideal for performance wear, but you would they call them flexible application pads. Um, if you decide to go that route, they're kind of a thicker cover sheet, and so we recommend not putting those directly over the transfer for items that are laundered, because um, it does mess with the durability a little bit. Um, a Teflon sheet won't mess with the durability, but it also isn't pulling out any heat, so it's not going to really save too much of the scorching um, from the fabrics. All right, looks like we've got most of the questions, I think, taken care of here today, but if you're watching this recording or if you're on Facebook Live, we definitely want to hear um, some more of the challenges that you guys are having so we can address them on additional morning shows or create videos for Stalls TV to help you guys overcome them. So if you have them, we have a survey at the end of the morning show. 
that will um, ask for your top challenges, go ahead and type that in there if you're on the GoToWebinar client. If you're on Facebook Live, go ahead and type them in the comments. We'll make sure to get a hold of those um, comments and start creating some video footage for that as well. Or you can do that on our YouTube channel if you're watching this back recorded as well. Yeah, we love to hear from you, so get on there and comment away. Yeah, absolutely. So next week we'll be back with another episode talking about oversized printing. Um, not only with the oversized jersey, which we love to feature here in the morning show, but really big profit opportunities with tents, um, tablecloths, and all kinds of things like that, and how to actually print them at your heat press. So we look forward to seeing you guys next week. See you then.